I'd like to welcome you to our groundbreaking celebration for the Northgate Link Extension. Connecting Link Light Rail to the airport, uh, from the airport to Northgate has been a priority and a vision for this region for the last two decades. The ST2 package that voters approved in 2008 expanded that vision to the north, east, and south. The groundbreaking today brings us one step closer to that long-held vision. We're delighted to be here this, uh, in this neighborhood, uh, and this neighborhood has been so supportive. Many of you remember, and I think it's going to be displayed at some point, the Yes in My Front Yard signs from years ago. Well, now we're here, and yes, we're ready to go. Northgate Link will be a major part of the regional mass transit system. This 4.3 mile extension includes stations in the University District, Roosevelt Neighborhood, and Northgate. Trains will begin running in 2021, and by 2030, God willing, uh, over 60,000 daily riders will be added to the link system. That's a huge jump in mobility for the region. Last year, 26 million people boarded our trains and buses, and ridership continues to climb. We're continuing to build extensions and open new service, this fall, I'm happy to say we will open the Sounder Commuter Rail Extension to South Tacoma and Lakewood, a project very near and dear uh, to my heart as Pierce County Executive. We're well on our way towards building light rail between downtown Seattle and UW, and the trains will be running there in 2016. We're also making great progress in extending light rail north to Linwood, south to South 200th Street, and then east to Mercer Island, Bellevue, and Overlake. But like all major transportation projects, we can't do it alone. We wouldn't be here today without the strong support of the neighborhoods and project partners. And of course, we need to thank the voters of our region, those who chose to support the expansion of our regional transit system by approving the Sound Transit 2 plan in 2008. There are many others that deserve recognition, and I'm going to try and get through these folks quickly. Uh, I'd like to recognize at least, I don't believe Julia Patterson is here, but I'd like to recognize her. Uh, Joe McDermott is here. Great. Joe McDermott is King County Council member and Sound Transit Board member, and Dave Erling. Dave, are you here? Okay. Dave Erling is an Edmonds Council member and a Sound Transit Board member. We, I believe, have some former Sound Transit board members. And remember, this project has a long history and many former board members were involved in making it happen. Greg Nichols, Greg, are you here? I don't see him. Former mayor of Seattle and the board chair when voters approved SD2 in 2008. Um, and this provided the funding to design and build the Northgate Link Extension. And I know Jan Drago's here. Jan, there she is. Thank you, Jan. King County Council member. Our federal partners, we're pleased to have our federal partners. I just was saying just to a few folks just a little while ago, we are truly blessed here in the Pacific Northwest to have the congressional delegation we have, to have the U.S. Senators we have, and we have great support from them. Uh, Amanda Brothers is here, Uriel Ibarra is here, representing Se Senator Murray's office. Wait, there they are in the sun. You bet. Sarah Crum from Cor uh, Congressman Jim McDermott's office. Sarah, are you here? Yes, there she is in the back. And Rick, is Rick Olson here? Represent PSRC, the Pew Sound Regional Council. Hey, Rick. Uh, elected officials, we have Gary Pollack from the 46th District. Gary? Jerry. Jerry, sorry. Sorry. And Will Hall from the Shoreline City Council. And Seattle Port Commissioner Rob Holland. And Cindy Rue is here as well, representative from the Shoreline area. Dow's going to talk a little bit about Joni. Uh, Joni couldn't be here today. Um, and our planning partners, the University of Washington. One mile of our tunnel will go under campus. This requires a lot of close coordination with the U uh, to make this project possible. The City of Seattle, King County Metro, and the Washington State Department of Transportation, all critically important partners on this project. Contractors and consultants building the Northgate Link Extension will be a big boost to our local economy here and one way to measure that is the number of firms 
who have either worked on the project's design or will help construct it, and there are just too many contributors to name them all, but I wanted to mention some of the primary firms. The Jacobs Associate Team for Civil and Architectural Final Design, our major contractors are Parsons, uh, Brinkerhoff, um, Alcon Hewitt Architects, and LMM uh, Architects, with an additional 19 other sub uh, consultants. So lots of folks, lots of hands involved. LTK Engineering Services for Systems Final De Design and the construction management firm North Star. Jacobs Associates, LTK, and North Star all graciously and generously contributed to sponsoring this community celebration today. So we're very grateful for their support. So let's give them a round of applause. We've awarded the first construction contract on the project with eight more to come. Titan Earthwork for the demolition and environmental remediation of the U Roosevelt and U District sites. And finally, I'd like to recognize the neighbors, residents, and businesses all along the alignment who have worked with us to get to this point with whom we work with closely during construction. Thank you very much. We are so pleased to be bringing Link Light Rail to these neighborhoods. So, having said that, I would like the staff who helped put this from Sound Transit, we have an awesome staff in the Sound Transit Agency, to raise your hand and wave if you participate in helping make this event possible. So, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce the next speaker, who is my brother from the north, King County uh, Executive Dow Constantine. Thank you, Executive McCarthy. Welcome to the nation's 14th most populous county. Anytime you like to visit. Uh, you've been a great chair for Sound Transit and a great regional leader, and we so much uh, appreciate everything that you're doing to help bring light rail to all parts of Central Puget Sound. I'm honored to be here today to celebrate the construction of this important light rail extension. Uh, before I get started on my remarks, though, I, uh, as was mentioned, want to say a few words on behalf of our Sound Transit CEO, Joni Earl. Joni can't be here today because of an urgent family matter, uh, but she really wanted me to point out to you that today marks the start of our first light rail extension funded under Sound Transit 2, the measure approved by the voters in 2008. Uh, and we've gotten to this point based on the fine work of the Sound Transit staff, some of whom waved their hands earlier, many of whom are uh, back at the office working on other Sound Transit projects today. Joni specifically cited Ahmad Fazel, and I wanted to uh, see if Ahmad is here and can wave at us. There you go. But she hastened to add that this was a total team effort to plan and build and operate the current system that is the foundation for the under construction university link and this new Northgate link extension. And of course that team is led by Joni Earl. Uh, so we're thinking of her today. We wish she could be here for this celebration, but there will be many more celebrations to come and we would not be here today without her remarkable skills and drive. The transportation we build today creates the land use we will live with for generations to come. And many of us will want to live near fast and frequent light rail service. We need to plan now for those future communities. These light rail stations will help communities shape the future. We call that transit-oriented development, or TOD. TOD means planning and locating new housing and commercial developments close to those light rail stations. It's a winning combination. The stations provide convenient access to new homes and businesses, and they, in turn, generate additional transit riders. To be successful, we must work very closely with communities like Roosevelt and with cities because both our stations and the new development they bring must fit in to the existing fabric of each neighborhood. We don't want just any sort of development around light rail stations. At the Northgate station, we're working together. Sound Transit, the City of Seattle, King County Metro, 
on a plan to improve access for buses and bikes and pedestrians and cars to complement future development goals at Northgate. By working together, we can help the Northgate neighborhood transform islands of asphalt into a thriving hub with homes and jobs for thousands of people. You can expect more transit-oriented development projects in the future, including right here in Roosevelt at the former QFC site. We need to put more people back to work, and Sound Transit projects are doing that in a big way. Sound Transit is a long partnership with labor, and I am very proud of that strong relationship. So this day has been a long time in coming, and I am delighted to be here to see this next great milestone get started. Thank you very much. Dow uh, is an absolutely tireless worker for the citizens of Pierce County and for the region. And, uh, did I say Pierce? Did I say Pierce? I wonder why I said Pierce. Maybe because of the jab that you just gave me. You know, I, I, we all just got finished watching the Olympics, and you got to think of these projects as we're doing the 440 run, and we're, we're passing that baton, and as we connect our communities, it's important for us to be able to do a good handoff. And so, anyways, having said that, I'm very pleased to welcome Mayor Mike Begin, who's also on our board, uh, because it is a partnership. Mayor Again is uh, a tireless advocate, and I won't say for the city of Tacoma, I will say for the city of Seattle, and has brought us say that the discussion of are we going to build bright rail in the region is over. The discussion now is when does it get into my neighborhood? Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. what we want to know. And what we see is in Roosevelt, it's coming to this neighborhood. In the U District, it's coming to your neighborhood. In Northgate, it's coming to your neighborhood. And it's going to keep going further too. So this commit, this region is fully committed to extending rail transit and it's going to be, it will be transformative. We can anticipate in the neighborhoods I just mentioned the effects it will have and in the city and I know the neighborhoods are really committed to it. Even years ago, Roosevelt making the decision, they wanted that station right in the middle of their business district. They didn't want it on the edge. In Northgate, we're engaged, we got a, a grant from the federal government um, and we're working with the county and PSRC about how do we plan, and we made another recent breakthrough about uh, the potential for a pedestrian bridge over I-5, so even more people could reach that station by more ways of getting there. So it's really exciting. Um, I also want to say that Sound Transit has partnered with the city of Seattle, we are both putting in money to advance rail planning on how can we get light rail out to Ballard in the future. We, we, we've, uh, yeah, there we go. We've taken a look at uh, our own city's transit master plan because we don't want, we, we are working to connect all the cities in the region to each other, but how do we connect our neighborhoods to that regional system as well? So our city of Seattle transit master plan is also looking with the First Hill streetcar, the potential connecting South Lake Union streetcar to First Hill and beyond. It's a different era, and we're in an urban era now. We can see it by the fact that these types of investments mean that big companies like Microsoft are talking about building their campuses here in an urban area because it has great transit, because it's walkable, because it's vibrant and vital. Not building suburban campuses uh, for all of their new employees. So we're in an exciting time. This investment is absolutely amazing. We know it's going to take a partnership uh, with the community and across multiple agencies. I love the baton passing off analogy. It's just perfect. We're going to have to keep passing the baton off to each other. This is a long-term effort, and it's going to take a lot of work from all of us. And it's just really exciting to be here today and be part of the effort that's been made by so many people to get us to this. So thank you, everybody. We have a lot of people that are going to say a few words, just a few. And the next one is State Senator David Frock. David has shown himself to be an active and effective leader for the region, and he's built an impressive reputation for both his commitment to the environment and to transportation. So I'm very pleased that he's agreed to share a few words with us today. Thank you, Executive McCarthy. It is a distinct honor to be here. I can truly say this is my first groundbreaking and the two
two years that I've been in public office, it's really an honor to be here. Uh, I am a member of the State Senate and a member of the Senate Transportation Committee. And I want this community and I want you to know that Sound Transit, uh, you have a friend in the State Senate and the Senate Transportation Committee, myself, and many of my colleagues are represented for you, Representative Paulette, who are here today. Uh, this is, a, is an exciting moment and a proud day for the City of Seattle and Sound Transit in King County. Uh, I am thrilled that two of the stations on the North Link extension from the uh, Husky Stadium station and then up to Northgate running through this district are in my district and we are very, very appreciative of the work you've done to help us on the pedestrian bridge and I'm going to try to help you as well as we move forward with that at Northgate. Um, I have lived in many cities in my short Somewhat, maybe not that short, I'm 43 years old, and now closer to ARC than I was in my mid-30s. But I've lived in many, many cities in this country, uh, and several of them in Washington, D.C., and San Francisco, and Philadelphia. This is far and away the best city, but it's going to be even better when we have a transportation system and a transit system to match. So I am thrilled to be here. I want to thank you very much for uh, having given me the opportunity to be here with Executive Constantine and the Mayor, who have been such great leaders on this project all the way through. I look forward to stepping in and continuing to work with you. Thanks. Okay. The Federal Transit Administration's job is to make sure that public dollars are managed well and invested well. From the very beginning, the FTA has given Sound Transit strong oversight and direction. Rick Portralis, did I say it right, Rick? Close. Okay. Has been regional administrator of the FTA for many years and has a well-earned reputation as a leader in federal transportation issues. Please welcome Mr. Corchales. Thank you. 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 He's on a well-deserved vacation today, couldn't be with us. He sent me, I'm out on vacation today too, but I, I didn't want to miss this. Uh, especially since my background. I started working on the uh, Northgate neighborhood when I was a department head. City of Seattle worked for a couple different mayors. Uh, and I was, before I was appointed to the FDA position. And the City of Seattle's designation of the Northgate area as an urban center really brought with it a commitment to invest in public amenities and infrastructure to encourage continued private sector development. Now that same commitment extends to the Federal Transit Administration and our mission to really support regional mobility and investments that create jobs and leverage federal funding in a way that supports sustainable communities. And we know there are many neighborhoods that really want to get that sustainability element and we think this investment does it. I also believe the Northgate Extension has been talked about will definitely stimulate more transit-oriented development around the three stations along this line. And FDA looks forward to the continued partnership with Sound Transit as they go from a, a linear extension to a regional system, uh, northeast and uh, south. So uh, I look forward to continue that partnership. Thank you very much. Well, I think it's really apropos as I announce this next speaker because as we saw the workers passing by, uh, we, none of this could be done without the, the great labor force that we have. Um, Keith Weir, Assistant Executive Sec Secretary of the Seattle King County Building Trades Council is here. And this and other sound transit projects wouldn't be possible without these skilled workers and dedicated workers. And we're thrilled to have our labor partner here with us today. Keith Weir is the Assistant Executive Secret Secretary, as I said, of the Seattle King County Building and Construction Trades Council, nationally recognized for their leadership on apprenticeship, workforce training, and inclusiveness. And did, weren't you glad you were sitting here instead of being one of these guys walking along here? <laughs> Thank you very much. Come on up, Keith. Thank you, Executive McCarthy. Uh, I am Keith Weir. I represent the uh, 10,000 or so plus minus uh, building and construction trades workers that uh, we represent within Seattle and the greater King County region. Uh, we wholeheartedly partner with the Sound Transit uh, in, in our construction projects for the, uh, the Lincoln Light Rail extension as well as moving south to uh, hopefully someday include the city of Federal Way uh, in, in the future. But we're getting a good start on that. Moving across the lake will be a, a great benefit as well. 
uh, it's been a, a great relationship, as I mentioned, with Sound Transit in conjunction on uh, negotiating our project labor agreement and extending it to ST2 is a great milestone. Um, agreements like this benefit not only the workers who are on the job, but also the community members that we can bring in through our various programs. It benefits our veterans. Our Helmets to Hard Hats program is a program where we can bring men and women coming back after having served their country uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan around the globe. Uh, brings them an opportunity to get into a, a opportunity to get into an apprenticeship and learn lifelong skills that will provide them with a family wage and uh, benefits. And um, the transit-oriented development. I mean, it makes it much easier to uh, want to purchase a, an apartment or a condominium in a building like this when you have a station right across the street that you can walk to instead of having to take your car into work. Uh, and I just can't express again how much our important uh, relationship with Sound Transit has been through the dot-com bubble, uh, through the, uh, the Great Depression uh, since 2009 that building trades has faced. Uh, my members, you hear the numbers, 8% unemployment around the nation, 8 9%. Some of our locals are 30 to 50 percent unemployment. Uh, it's, it's depression era of levels for us. And, and thanks to Sound Transit, uh, it has been a little better for some of our folks, and we'll be getting better for more in the future. So thank you. Look forward to our partnership. And working. Thank you. Um, we're also very happy to welcome representatives from the three neighborhoods that will be directly served by North Link. Uh, Northgate Link Extension stations. We thank them in advance for their patience as we inconvenience their communities with several years of sometimes disruptive construction. We look forward to our continued partnership as we transform what are now dots on a map into attractive light rail stations that are a source of pride for every community. As you see these small children walking around, they're going to be teenagers or young adults. Um, and they'll be using these systems that we'll all have been able to say we were there when it was just a dot on a map. Jim O'Halloran was past president of the Roosevelt Neighborhood Association and was instrumental in leading a coalition of Roosevelt residents and businesses who convinced the South Transit Board to locate the Ro Roosevelt Station here in the heart of the neighborhood in 2005. It is an honor to have Mr. O'Halloran with us today. Come on up. Thank you, Executive McCarthy, and thank you to Sound Transit for putting on a, a great a great event here today. Finally, finally, we're here at the beginning of the real work uh, for Northgate Link Light Rail. Um, I thought we would never start breaking things and uh, moving dirt, and I'm sure I'm going to re uh, regret that statement when truck number 12,000 pulls out of the lot and chugs up 12th in about five years. As many of you know, the uh, light rail station here at 12th um, might not have been here, but instead could have been at 8th Avenue Northeast, several blocks west, up by the, uh, by the freeway. In 2001, there were those two options for locating the Roosevelt Station, 8th and 12th. Our neighborhood plan from the late 90s had always said that we want the station in the middle of the neighborhood in order to support the traditional business district. So in October of 2004, when the Sound Transit Board finally sat down to make the, the decision about where the station would go, uh, the RNA, the Roosevelt Neighborhood Association, was duty bound to, uh, to advocate for the 12th Avenue alignment. And our argument was essentially that the station could and should be the focal point of a revitalized neighborhood business district and that the 8th Avenue alignment would divert vitality from the commercial core. But there were engineering and financial challenges for the 12th Avenue alignment. Uh, it would have been less expensive to put the station at 8th. And the 12th Avenue alignment was actually originally directly underneath this building behind me. So the fine engineers at Sound Transit got to work and came up with a slightly revised 12th Avenue alignment right along the street, and they took another look at the cost estimates, and out here in the neighborhood, we formed a group called North Link Neighborhoods for 12, and we met weekly for about three months, and we cooked up every tactic we could think of to influence the immediate vicinity of the station. The rezoning recommendations were predictably challenging, but were finalized in January of this year, largely as the neighborhood had proposed. That's a whole nother story. The upshot here is that transit is the catalyst for a renaissance in Roosevelt. And uh, 
It's, it's, it's what's going to make this happen. It's our rallying cry, and we're very excited. Neighborhood leaders have and will continue working with Sound Transit, city government, and commercial real estate developers to leverage the investment in transit and to create a vibrant urban village. It's not always simple. Heaven knows it's not fast. Uh, you might say there are winners and losers in the process of building transit-oriented community. I don't see it that way. I think everybody wins in some measure through the creation of a more vibrant community. So I'd like to thank the Sound Transit Board for supporting the community's vision, the City of Seattle for engaging the neighborhood and working on the tricky details, and my wonderful neighbors and friends for always working to build a better community. Thanks a lot. I'd like to introduce Joshua Newman of the Maple Leaf Community Council. The North Gate station, located just up the line from here, will be Sound Transit's first station to be built next to an existing transit center. We expect by the year 2030, 15,000 people each day will board trains at North Gate. The Maple Leaf neighborhood, located just south of North Gate, will be well served by this project once it is built. Joshua Newman is past president of the Maple Leaf Community Council. He is here today to share his perspectives on the Northgate Link Extension Project. Let's welcome Mr. Newman. So, thank you everyone. Um, this is a great event and a glorious day. I grew up in Southern California, uh, and even though I love Seattle, I miss hot sunny days like this. So, um, but. The, they don't have events like this in the far-flung suburbs of LA where I grew up. Uh, people may not walk in LA, but that's not even a choice for people in San Bernardino. And that's what, make, that's what makes Link so amazing, is the ability to transform surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, we've argued the merits and the heights and the routes, but Link brings transformation and choices to neighborhoods, citizens, and families. Uh, choices on how to get to work and where to eat, choices on whether to drive a car or take the train, bicycle trips and short walks turn into a trip to the corner pub or a trip to the airport and a corner pub in London. And it's this liberation from logistical constraints that we need to bring to more Seattle neighborhoods. We need rail from Ballard to, and West Seattle to downtown, to Fremont and Wallingford and Uptown and Georgetown. I think the people are really calling for a Seattle subway. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, more Seattleites want to enjoy the liberties of mass transit, really. And Seattle shouldn't wait for our suburban neighbors as, as great as they are, but should push down transit to build more in Seattle and build it faster. Yeah. So yeah. thank you to Sound Transit, to Ron Ehrlich, Fred Wilhelm, to Dow and the mayor and David, to David Miller and Jim O'Halloran for your passion and your dedication to the city. And thank you again to all the, all the voters who had the foresight 10 years ago when I wasn't even sure I'd still be in Seattle to pass Sound Transit and push it forward and push Seattle and the region forward. Someday I want to add Link to the list of Metro and the L and BART. So let's keep building a Seattle subway. Keep pushing Link yeah. forward. I, I love the passion. Uh, I think we're going to put you on a bus and have you go to Bellevue because I think that passion, that excitement about building Link Light Rail is something you can infuse with folks. No, we love our Bellevue partners. Um, I'm now we're at the, at the last speaker and I want to introduce Josh LaBelle representing the University District. I'm delighted that Josh LaBelle is here with us today. Mr. Gabell is the executive director of the Seattle Theater Group, which renovated and operates the Neptune Theater located adjacent to our future U District station. The Neptune Theater opened during the silent film era in 1921 and is the only intact survivor of the five University District movie houses. Josh and the Seattle Theater Group are no strangers to partnering with Sound Transit as they have provided community leadership during construction of the Pine Street stub in front of the Paramount Theater. Please welcome Mr. LaBelle. Thank you very much, Pat. It's an honor to be here. 
Uh, as she mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm Josh Lavelle, the Executive Director of Seattle Theatre Group. Uh, we're the proud nonprofit owners of Paramount, Moore, and Neptune Theatres, really the operators. Um, we're new to this community, to the University District, to the Roosevelt neighborhood, and I want to first say thank you for such an incredible welcome in transitioning the historic Neptune Theater into a different type of service uh, for our community, that being performing arts. Um, I've, I've often believed that public transportation and the arts share a whole lot in common. In the end, all we're trying to do with the Neptune is build community move culture forward, move people forward. And I believe that public transportation shares that same commitment, that responsibility, moving people forward, improving culture, improving our lives together. Um, I'm proud to say that since last June, uh, nearly 100,000 people have walked through the doors of, of the historic Neptune. So people in this community are responding to new things. And, and I can say that when my business partner and I, David Allen, found out that Sound Transit was planning a station right near the Neptune, we got terribly excited. We see this as an incredible opportunity for us to continue to move arts forward, move culture forward in, in, in our city and in this particular neighborhood. If there's one thing I want to get across to you, uh, those of you who are in this neighborhood and in the U District, it's the incredible experience that Seattle Theatre Group has had working closely with Sound Transit over the last eight years in downtown Seattle, right next door to the Paramount Theatre. Sound Transit has time and time again proven, proven themselves to be committed to our city, to our business, to making changes at the last moment for us when Wicked decides to show up two days early and and we've got to load in a show and before you know it, Sound Transit's happy to move their digging schedule around our business, around our community. We have in Joni Earl and the people that surround her a, a, a terrific organization that I have every reason to believe will do right by this community, by this neighborhood. So we're, we're honored to be asked to share that experience with you and we thank you for we thank you for, we thank Sound Transit for everything you're doing, and to all the public officials who are here today, thank you for continuing to move us forward. I raise my glass of water to you all. Okay, all right. Thanks to all of you for coming out and joining us today. I know folks are anxious to hear more great music and dig into all the fun activities planned for this afternoon, but we have uh, a little bit of digging to do first. So, if the speakers and the board members and former build board members and project partners move over here to help me during the first phase of dirt, we also want any children in the group to go over to where the dirt hall is because we'd like you to join us and invite you to grab a shovel as well. Let's get started. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> a little bit, thanks. Is everybody ready? Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Time. One, two, three. We're good. 